A juvenile great white shark was found washed up on the beach in Quag this morning. CBS 2's Carolyn Gussoff spoke with Greg Metzger, the chief field coordinator of the South Fork Natural History Museum and Nature Center, about the discovery of the dead shark and if it should be cause for any concern. So the DEC and Quag police have confirmed that it was a white shark, a juvenile, they said male, about seven feet this morning, that washed up dead, right? Yeah, as far, and I only have the same information that I think pretty much everyone else has, which are the pictures that have come in. Um, I have not seen the shark myself yet. That's why we were here to try and, and find it so that we could, uh, you know, pull it out of the water and try to do a scientific workup on, you know, potentially what caused it to die. And we don't really have access to a lot of dead white sharks. And so the internal organs and any of the um, muscle biopsies or any of the parts and pieces of the animal are very valuable to the scientific community. So that's why we're here to try to get it and take samples that can then be shipped around to the various researchers that we work with. And to find a, a white shark off of Long Island, you know, people are, are like alarmed, like oh, a great white shark. What do you say to that? <laughs> yeah, so um, the white sharks have always been here um, for several decades. It's been anecdotal in the scientific community and the recreational commission, fishing community and the, and the uh, commercial fishing community that, they, that the south shore of Long Island is actually a nursery for white sharks. And so what our team at the South Fork Natural History Museum looked to do was to confirm is the New York bite, is, the, is this area uh, a, a nursery for white sharks? And our, our study from the over 30 sharks, baby white sharks that we have tagged so far, shows that it is uh, a nursery for sh white sharks specifically. So these are very, uh, I want to say it's, it's wrong to say that they're very common here because it's a very small number of individuals that are here on any given year. Some very rough numbers estimate as little as like 300 from Manhattan to Montauk. So uh, it's a very significant place here that, that it is a confirmed nursery, but we're, we're, it, the numbers of animals that are actually here are very, 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 in the hundreds for, for the white shark. And are they any more dangerous to, to humans, or should we be more concerned than yeah. like sand sharks? Great, great poignant question with all the uh, news media that's been uh, surrounding Long Island this year and the, and the negative interactions. Uh, white sharks and all of the sharks that are here on Long Island are only here to feed on small bait fish. Typically the large schools of Bunker or Menhaden that are here, uh, those negative interactions that people did encounter are probably due to the sharks trying to get at the food source. And from the work that we do, I'm the chief field coordinator for the SOFO Shark Research Program. You know, we're in the water, not in the water, but we're on the water trying to target these animals. And we see these sharks pushing each other out of the way as they're vying to try to get food. And so the sharks are not here to eat the people. They don't, they don't, a lot of these sharks don't have the capacity, the teeth, the jaw structure to rip off large pieces of flesh. These people were probably just in or near the food source and these sharks are very used to bumping into large things trying to get their food but unfortunately their their teeth are in the front of their mouths and their skin is very rough and so it's it's possible to have just a scratch from a tooth or a brush burn from their skin but these sharks are not here to feed on things bigger than a, a 12 inch bunker okay great so no more of concern than any of the other sharks it's not, none none no. whatsoever really what you need to do is educate yourself on interacting with a more conserved ocean, which is really what's going on. We have conservation efforts that have been put in place to protect not only the food fish, which are the menhaden, but also the sharks, and we're starting to see the positive benefits of more food in the water, which means more predators in the water. So people need to educate themselves on when to swim and where to swim. If you see a large school of bait fish in front of you, if you see a lot of whales and dolphins, well, the whales and dolphins are there to feed on the same food that the sharks are. So if you're seeing whales and dolphins, nobody's complaining about that, but there's a very very good chance that underneath them or with them are the sharks. So if you are in a situation where you see a lot of feeding activity just from the beach, enjoy this view and once that moves out then you can resume uh, you know, your activities in the water. Also swimming in the early morning or in the late evening is also an increased time when sharks are going to be u utilizing that, that uh, less light to, to maximize their opportunities of catching prey. So if you're in the water during those times you're also potentially increasing your chances of, of a negative interaction.